You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Four Gates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. Another great afternoon for Maryland lacrosse, an overtime thriller at Virginia. Bruce, what did you see out there? Oh, Danny boy, the lights, the lights are shining. Danny Kelly, after he missed the low ball, he pounded in one from the left side. But I'm going to ask you, the, son, the father of a goalie, describe the effort and the saves by Brian Rupel, all right, the guy we talked to and fell in love with at the Under Armour Games from Catonsville. The floor is all yours, Wayne. It was a boy, that was a career maker right there. He goes from a, a low left to high right, two saves, an absolute defining sequence, one of the most exhilarating stops you can get. I brought up Braden Holtby securing a Stanley Cup win. You brought up Kyle Burnlor the securing a you know, a NCAA championship run save. It, it was at that level for a freshman to do that. It was absolutely amazing. Bruce, you also are the father of a goalie. What did it mean to you? I, it was unconscious. I mean, to me, the first shot point blank, I say, well, the game's over. All right. And the ball pops in the air. The second shot, the rebound game's mm -hmm. over. The third shot I never saw because it was pure congestion, but it was just incredible. And I have to tell you something, okay? We got the ball, brought it up again, and it was just a magical moment in a game that ironically, though being thoroughly outplayed in the first half, it turned out that it was Virginia fighting uphill the whole time. But just a great day for uh for Jack, for Jack Horse, there's no doubt about it. And Luke Weirman, you know, there were even old saves, but a lot of the saves that Petey LaSala got, we attacked and got the ball back. It's hard. Right. You know, that statistic is going to change. It's the final possession that matters. It and, does. Uh, and Maryland played that really well. Petey had the jump on Luke. You and I discussed during the week that is there something going on? Is he injured because he didn't look that great at Albany? Starts off, doesn't look that good. And then somewhere into the second quarter, he starts to dominate. He evened it up. And from there on, it was an absolute battle. And I, I like what Virginia did. They tried to make him play the whole game. So they left Petey on there, even though I think a lot of those sequences actually hurt Virginia, keeping Luke on the field as a defender. He had two goals. Uh, you were losing your mind when when Tills called a timeout on a goal there late in the fourth quarter because it brought up some other memories, I assume. Correct. Against Virginia, when it happened, when a uh, uh, Virginia coach called a phantom timeout, when we had the ball and Grant Catalito put the winner in, and eventually we lost the game in six overtimes because the goal was disallowed. Look, I can't blame Tillman for that. He just, you know, listen – I had to talk. You were there at the press conference after yeah. Princeton when I said to Tillman, why isn't Weirman shooting off when he goes down the middle? Because if he doesn't shoot, then the guys aren't going to come to him. Well, he proved he could shoot today. He had one goal and one goal called back. And uh, he was great, Weirman, as always. But MVP today, despite Danny Kelly's goal, despite Luke Weirman, had to be Brian Ruppel. And you have a little asterisk in there for May Carr and Zapatella. Oh, it's Zapatella had to have huge ups. Yeah, Rupel, Rupel had the five bell save uh, that, that you hear about in hockey, but Zapatella really, really shut down Virginia's these ways of scoring. They had to be inventive. Virginia had to do some other things because they couldn't really rely on number one uh, like they Wayne. wanted to. Wayne, it's six to three. I admit that I thought this baby was over. We got dominated in that second period so much. And yet our great coach, John Tillman, came back out and the team scored six goals in the third period to establish dominance in the game. And it took Virginia uh, to the last seconds to get the tying goal. And uh, listen, these timeouts, I, I'm going to argue all my whole life, 
finally, like, all, I I know, all I know is at the end of the day, a great shot. Babe. Look, Danny mm-hmm. Kelly and Danny Maltz and uh, 55, Murphy. Are your best, yes. they're the best shooters on the team. Probably Jack Horse and Brandon Urksa had a phenomenal dodge today, a dodge of which we haven't seen in a while. But you got dodgers and you got shooters. And when this situation, you need the shooter, Danny Kelly is the shooter. And Danny Moss is too. I'm not going to say one's better than the other, mm-hmm. but they're your shooters and they came through. And this was a magnificent win. And listen, you beat number one, you deserve to be number one. However, Notre Dame beat us. So I think Notre Dame will be number one. Uh, that's my guess. And you can't yeah. take that away from them. Well, but if I, anybody I, doesn't think, if anybody doesn't think we're in the hunt, you don't know lacrosse. Well, this this is a different team than started the year. Uh, you, you had to get a lot of minutes from, I think it was uh, Jake McDonald, 51. You Jack had to, McDonald. Jack McDonald. You had to get you know, the whole game out of Rupel. You're starting Urxa. Uh, Whittier had a lot of uh, minutes. Spanos, who didn't play last year, had a lot of minutes. A lot of these freshmen are, are settling in. Um, you know, they tried to set things up. Uh, where Colin Burleis got singled up, and that didn't work as well as it did early in the year. So he's growing. A lot of the parts that came in to replace the big guns that left are starting to get better. And you look at a guy like Red, number 47, who played a lot of the minutes in the second half as a short stick midi. And Mason says that guy, his emergence was one of the things that allowed Maryland to get that lead. And that's a guy that really didn't play last year. So, yeah, he was on the team. So you start to go. There's five, six guys that didn't play, that this is their first time through, and now you're starting to see why they're on the team. And you go, hey, Tills knew what he was doing when he recruited those guys because this is a better team, markedly better team than started the season. Listen, there's nothing to say except bravo, Maryland. I never thought, I really didn't think they would win this game. Not that they could not win the game, but it was at Klockner. We beat him twice last year, humiliated him twice last year. Virginia really didn't come out ready. We jumped that 3 nothing lead, and they hadn't woken up yet, first three shots. But when all is said and done, all right, Weirman wins the key faceoff and Rupel. He, this has got to go with his win column along with Kelly because those saved the game was over. All right. No it, goalie, it across, including yeah. the great Notre Dame goalie could have, could have made those saves. I'm not sure how Rupel did it, but right. Oh my Lord. It, it does. Year, Bruce, what are they going to do next year? Don't know. Yes. Uh, this you've been listening to the big dog post game show. It, it is possible that Logan McNanny just got Wally pipped. Because it would be really hard to take Rupel out of that net. Um, so when you look, you know what? Next, what? next year is next year. We'll see what happens next year. So the one, other than the fact that Maryland won, one of the other topics that we've talked about, maybe not on the air as much, is you know Maryland's season last year was defined because it was an all-time great season. When you start listening to the broadcast today, they start talking about Virginia having an all-time team. Well, guess what? This afternoon, that all-timer was erased because Maryland's all-timer from last year, and they come in, and they're still the champs because they went to number one in front of the largest crowd they've had probably since the last time Maryland was there in 2013, and Maryland wins, and it was a classic. And, and a that, great that's, recap. That's a, fine, that's a great recap statement, Wayne. And uh, you know, I'm a little under the weather. All right, you could not go for other reasons, and we missed it. But you know what? The field is just as good. I have to tell you the truth. I've yes. always said it's not about you and me being there. It's about us winning, and winning is everything. And uh, hats off to Tillman, Rupel, Kelly, Spanos, Chorus. Uh, Daniel Maltz, everybody, because it was a true team victory. Uh, we're men as always. And uh, and now we start the big 10 season when, when then the games count life and death. It doesn't end for Maryland, but that's why you go to Maryland, my friend. That's why you play lacrosse at Maryland. And yes, yes, it is. So one more season defining, uh, a career defining win. 
as Maryland takes it, a classic in overtime. And that will wrap up the lacrosse postgame show, hopefully about, I don't know, close to midnight tonight, this Saturday. We're going to have a, one more postgame show talking about a Maryland team beating the number one team in the country. If possible, it, it will be historic to take down two number ones, Maryland and Alabama in basketball at 940 Eastern time. I want to leave you with one thought. I called Danny Kelly's grandfather after the game, and I'm going to say this to you. I didn't even say it to him. I think this might be a game changer for him, getting this winning goal. I really do. He's had some awful tough luck with his sh with his shooting, but that last shot was on the money. Lower left corner could never have been stopped. And uh, let's hope that he blossoms and even gets better from here. But this was a great day for Maryland lacrosse. And I told his grandfather, this, this game will last for a decade, no matter what happens the rest of this season. This game is unforgettable for Maryland. And that'll that's wrap all, us that's up. That's all I got. That, that's all we need to hear. Good afternoon from the Viner Fourgate studio. We will check in after the basketball game. Maryland in overtime. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Bruce Posner. Mason's away from the camera. We'll see you later tonight.